Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good vibes, good energy, good people. It's your boy Mickey Fenty, aka Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe right now. Also, if you want to support my brand, it's inspiredbydreams.shop. And it's a street preppy wear brand. It's just something I'm bringing to my community so we can just dress outside of the box. Okay, this conversation that we're having today, this is a part two to Black Americans versus Caribbean. And just the dynamics that we share and the things that we don't have in common. And I bring this conversation to people just let everybody know that my family is from Barbados and I was born out here in America. And I had so many different friends and still have so many different friends from different cultures. So the dynamics that we all share is what brought us all together. The things that we don't have in common, those are the things that we don't carry on. We just, we live our lives. So you gotta love people for their differences as well as the similarities. All I'm saying. So let's jump into this conversation. You know how it goes, just like the last one. Leave the comments down below, and I will definitely. And we're gonna continue this conversation. You can you can use you can continue the conversation in my comment section, or we can continue it in my live morning shows, 9 a.m. Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Okay, love y'all, and let's just jump right into it. Mickey made it. Mickey made what you made, Mickey. Forget about the way it used to be. This is not a damn democracy. We are in a state of emergency, and my word is law. So we come over here, y'all assume we have the money because we come from the states, which to a certain degree because the city is less sure. But you have to think too, like let's say me myself, I have busted my tail to save money to be even be able to come over here. So when you raise the price on me and I'm not some uh, millionaire, you know what I mean? It's very disheartening because I save money to come here. I don't have a lot of money, you know what I mean? So in the States, I, I think there's a misconception that black people have the money. As a majority, I mean, there are like, you know, individuals, but as a majority, we have the least money in the state. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear this up today so there don't gotta be any more debates on it. All skin folks ain't kin folks. And what I mean by that is not how you guys think. Africans, Caribbeans, and Black Americans are all three different sets of people. Please stop grouping us all together. We are not Africans. We don't favor Africans. We don't have any African features. We don't favor the Caribbean people. We don't have any of their features. Nothing. We don't talk like them, none of their culture. We are Negroes, black Americans, whatever you want to call us, the anointed ones, the chosen people, whatever you want to call us. But we're not the same group of people. So when y'all, I be when we go to different cities and stuff, and people be like, it's a lot of black businesses. No, it's a lot of African owned businesses, a lot of Caribbean owned businesses from those people from overseas in the island. There aren't a lot of black owned businesses in Atlanta. All those businesses are owned by Caribbean and black people. There's a handful, literally, out of a city with a million black people, there's a handful of black businesses. So just for future confusion, you guys don't have to group all us together. Jamaicans, Haitians, all that, they're totally different than black Americans. We're a totally different group of people. Don't get that confused. They don't like us, we don't like them. We, I don't have a problem with them, but they're not us. We're not them. There's no country in Africa that's came back here and said, hey, y'all came from here. Y'all can come back now. We're sorry we did that to y'all. I met an African lady one day a couple of years ago. I was telling her, my ancestors come from Africa, you know, before slavery, from the slave ships. She said, fuck your ancestors. I was like, what? She said, fuck your ancestors, boy. They lied to you. Tell me what port they come from. Casa not saying African Americans have no culture is not shocking to me in the slightest. And before we go any further, I want you guys to know when you hear people saying, oh, this is not happening, you know, outside of social media, it's because these are conversations that we're having on social media. It feels more like they're coming from the, these are in-house conversations. These are not outside conversations. So the conversations that we're having, these come from what things that are said inside the home. And that's the difference. Let's go. 
However, it does bring up a point that I think about constantly when it comes to these like diaspora or culture wars, whatever you want to call it, is how come the buck stops with Caribbeans when it comes to culture? So often when Africans or Caribbeans say, oh, black Americans have no culture and we start listing things from our culture, they start to say, oh no, well that's from our culture. Or like, who do y'all think y'all got that from? That's from us. And to Caribbeans, I want to say, no, that's from Africans. Like all of your culture is also built off African culture, but you get to claim it as your own and we don't. I don't understand that because if you are black anywhere else in the diaspora, your culture is an amalgamation of different African cultures. You just put your own spin on it. Like wache, rice and peas and red beans and rice are all pretty much the same thing, but they're different because of where we are in the diaspora. And those are all foods that are part of our own culture. Like whenever African Americans mention hairstyles, other black people in the diaspora are so very quick to remind us that like they started those hairstyles, even though black Americans have put their own significant twist on a lot of the hairstyles that come from Africa. But it's like, okay, if you're gonna say you can't get keep that, that comes from us, why do we only get that critique and not Caribbeans? Like, we are literally just a both stop apart. I think what it boils down to is not living in a predominantly white society. Because other black people in the diaspora simply don't get how it feels to live in a culture that simultaneously criticizes you for your own culture, but also steals it from you constantly. Like there are little black boys getting their hair cut off at school while white people are letting their hair mat just cause it's fun and they like the look. The things that we create are popularized, commercialized, and stripped from their origins so much so that so many people forget that we started that shit, that's ours. We don't get to keep anything that's ours for very long. And so because it's not preserved, it's not seen and respected the same way that other people's cultures are. And it's not seen that way and respected because we are black living in a predominantly white society. So Kaisenat is going to continue to profit off of African American culture because he believes it's pop culture. Because people don't see AAVE as being something that is ours. Because people don't see rap as being something that is ours. Because people don't see our dances as ours. They see it as pop culture. This is just what Americans do, but no, it's what black Americans do. And we started that shit. It is ours. And the part that I really find disappointing about this is because he has a very large African American audience. So I can't imagine having someone you look up to, regardless of my opinions on him, turn around and say that you are uncultured. That would hurt my feelings. And I just wish he had been sensitive enough to his fan base to recognize that before he said that. This question, not originally. And before we go real quick, if you got up to this point, real quick, down below in the comment section, I need you to um, say your culture and give your favorite dish or your favorite food from your culture that's most you know celebrated in your culture in the comment section opposed to me but so common lately that i need to address it is the latest shot fired in the diaspora wars you can read it i will answer using four questions of my own that will be very brief and you may reply in the comments number one what type of person knows good and well that Tradition and heritage was criminalized for centuries and even 12 consecutive generations back to back. Yet would still ask the descendants of those people why they don't know who they are. What type of person would ask that of the people who experienced this kind of non-self-inflicted trauma? Second question. What type of parents raise people who would add insult to injury by asking this kind of question of the specific groups whose heritage, whose names, whose language, whose beliefs, whose ancestral science and math was stolen? Question number three. The African diaspora consists of a bunch of slave colonies because we were trafficked away from our motherland into these slave colonies created by the Dutch, French, English, Spaniards, and Portuguese. So what kind of person who comes from one such colony would question the knowledge of self of people from another colony knowing both of them were given foreign languages, foreign names, and traditions that are not their own? Who are you to question me when you yourself come from a slave colony? And question number four, who started the diaspora wars? Because I'm interested in why you take the baton and run your leg of the race. In the diaspora wars specifically designed to stop any semblance of unity before it even begins. In other words, who paid you? 
there seems to be this divisiveness that is going on in the diaspora, whether it's Africans or Black Americans or Caribbeans. There seems to be this narrative of your culture is not as respected or you don't have any culture. Like we had African women on the show who said that their parents looked down upon Black Americans a certain way. And I also mm. know Caribbean parents who have come to this country and they're away from them Black people because they are X, Y, and Z. My parents are both from Grenada. They came here in the like 80s and 90s. So what he was saying about how they think that Black people are lazy does like resonate with me because I've heard that a lot. They don't want us mm -hmm. together. Exactly. So yeah, they push the media out too. there mm -hmm. <laughs> and the people in other continents is learning about America from what? The media, the, the movies, yeah. all yeah. that shit that they pushing mm -hmm. out there. So when they come Brainwash. here, they already got this yeah. preconceived yeah. notion that, oh, they thugs, they, mm -hmm. they not civil, all this other shit. And it's just ignorance at the end of the day. You got to take time and get to know people before judging them. That's a fact. Facts, facts. There's a difference in how Caribbean culture families dealt with their kids versus African families dealt with their kids. African families actually determine when you go to school, the career path you're going into. Uh, uh, Law. Uh, no, but that's, well, let me show you something. I disagree with that. No, 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 no. My friends. No, that's your they're friends. They're in Just I'm just saying. That's your friends. Because all my African friends, their parents, are, the Africans, are, me, my African families <laughs> are exactly the same as yeah, Caribbean. Right, let's keep okay. Wait, but can I say something? Can I say something? Can I say something? Can I say something? I 100% understand what you're saying. Yeah. You're right. Go on. Because I think like the, the third generation African family, yeah. because the Car remember the Caribbeans came here first. Yes, so they, they like. It's just generation. Yeah, it's just generation. So they're doing the same thing. They're doing the same thing. Exactly are you saying, the Car are you saying the Caribbean that we're just all dilute more in with regards to our parents say, just do your thing? That's all it is, but it's exactly the same thing. No, 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 I, I know that. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not getting to that debate. I'm talking about, I'm talking about the, the psyche of the parents generationally, as in targeting. He made a reference to his Asian friend who knew by the end of time he, he finished school was going to be. But I'm saying a lot, a lot of my, okay, okay, they all go different. That's that's from young. They all go from young. That's that's inherit. That's in the shop. That's inherited business. I'm talking about. That's inherited. They do everything differently. Alright, so the lady upset said me said me said. Now here's my take on this, right? Okay, so she upset that press button. We all know there's been this cultural difference between, you know, Africans versus Caribbeans where it looks like they don't like us, which may or may not be a fact, but that's not the thing. We shouldn't be that pressed if another culture doesn't rate us or like us, because at the end of the day, we should be in our own league. That's number one. Way how you delivered your message if you was trying to make a point or bring awareness to the situation was incorrect because there was too much vim in your message for it to ever be received in the way how you wanted it to be received, if there was good intention behind it. I'm not enabling the intrusion however we intrude on other people's stuff as well you can't fling stone in a glass oh and also we can't fight over stuff that is not ours carnival is not ours and we're in the wrong country to be arguing about who owns what it's the uk everything's diverse everything mix and blend oh, what an argument and when i say carnival is not ours i mean it is from the caribbean however it's the trini's culture jamaicans just partake we're not african-americans we're, we're sudanese we, americans yeah we are african-americans because sudan is in africa so we're i i, I know that I know that it's a whole other thing, thing. dr omar actually we are african created his own by the term and that's why some some black Americans say they don't want to be called African Americans because they don't feel like they have any ties to Africa. I, 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 think, I think reparations should be different for African Americans compared to us because we just got here. No, we don't. They need deserve right? most of reparations. I'm going to tell you this right now. We, we shouldn't even be in the conversation of reparations because we're not descendants of slavery. Reparations from the, the how we were colonized in Africa. Yeah, we can get reparations well, from right. France Britain and, and Britain and them. We, we don't need to get reparations it, here at all. Yeah, we'll, we'll never get it. Can I ask this question? What are the nuances and or parallels to the South Sudanese or African with the Black American experience? When I was growing up, most of my friends were African. And when I would say like stuff about Black people, they're like, oh, no, I'm not Black. I'm African. And their parents would say that, too. I would hear their parents say the word Akata, like toward mm -hmm. Black people. So I think I just don't think that our generation feels like that. I think it's the older generation that really feels mm -hmm. like the separation more just because they were immigrants. Honestly, I felt more othered and more like pushed aside by black American women than anyone else. Not saying not to perpetuate that trope of angry black woman or mean black woman. But when I met Sarah in high school, she was my first best friend. All the way up until high school, I had never had a close friend that was black. 
Sarah was the first one and she's African. So I've never had the experience where I was bullied by African people or felt other. Like this is my first time ever hearing that term that's derogatory towards black people. Mm. Oh, the so, Akata term? Yeah. This is my first time ever I've, hearing I've that. I've never heard that either. Yeah. That, 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 that's a, so let's be honest, that's a, that's a West African term. And it's not yeah. to separate that's true. East Africans versus West Africans. Mm-hmm. There's more tension when it comes to these specific issues when it comes to West Africans and African Americans because there is historical context. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're in closer to, proximity. To, to, yeah. Exactly. yeah. Right. For sure. Especially when you talk um, about slavery. Well, no hate to anybody. This video is for informational purposes only. I got an issue somewhat with the um, so-called black people that say we are African and this is why. You were born in America. I was born in America. Your parents, your grandparents, your great-grandparents and their parents and their parents plus their parents were born in America. And over those generations you've developed, we've developed different cultures, mannerisms, habits, as you will. So if you've never even let alone been to Africa, how are you going to be an African? Why would you identify as a foreigner in your homeland? And if you go to Africa, for the majority, they will call you American. They're not going to call you an African, they're going to call you an American. Because that's what you are. We don't see ourselves as one of you. When somebody tells you who they are, believe them. When they show you who they are, believe them. What I keep hearing black immigrants say, or just black folks of the diaspora from other places is, we are not the same as you black Americans. We don't see ourselves the same. We don't want to be the same. We don't have the same experiences. We are not one of you that's fine um i think that there has always been how we have been taught um at least in my experience is that we are all one and we all protect each other um in the hierarchy of blackness and then everything else Um, And because they have such different experiences than us where their blackness does not take the forefront more their nationality takes the forefront. Um, They're like, we we just, we don't see it the same. Um, And for some good reasons, if you go back and watch that girl's video, she talks about why there is such a difference. Um, And I understand her. I just am starting to recognize and believe them when they say what they say and stop trying to make them one of us if that's not what they want to be. Um, and I guess prioritizing my black Americanness over African Americanness or uh, diaspora talk in that way um, because they don't want to be. So, you know. And I still support, uh, I know how the world sees a lot of us, um, at least in America. Um, I have, you know, heard even the argument that when black Americans or say someone from the continent of Africa visit other countries, sometimes Africans are treated worse than black Americans because of nationality. Um, Americans having priority over other countries. So, I mean, again, I get what she's saying, but you don't have to keep telling me you don't want to be one of us. And what we have really noticed in this social media age is that they really don't want to, a lot of them really don't want to be considered one of us. And so I guess we should respect that and we maybe should prioritize our black Americanness, I guess. I don't know. This conversation about Africans hating on black Americans. Who even came up with that idea? Who came up with that conversation? Who came up with that conversation that Africans here in America are hating on black Americans? Do you know what it takes for an African to get an American visa in Africa? Do you know how much it costs? Do you know the stress? Do you know how long you have to wait? 
Me personally, I waited a year and a half. I had to fly from South Africa to Nigeria, from Nigeria to Ghana, just to get documents that the American Embassy needed. Do you know how much all of that shit cost? Do you know the time, the stress, and everything that went with it? And you think after going through all this stress, wasting all this money, wasting all these times waiting for a visa, and then I finally got an American visa to come to America, and then I came to America, only for me to be hating on black Americans, only for me to be hating on people that look like me, hating on people that I don't know, hating on people I'm meeting for the first time. Does that make any sense? But does that make any sense? Just think about it for a second. Does that make any sense? It is y'all that are doing the hate. Some of y'all though, I've met amazing black Americans, amazing ones. It is some of y'all that are doing the hate. Some of y'all hating the fact that Africans come here. In two, three to four years. They, are st- they, they start owning shit. They s- successful. They doing, they doing pretty good for themselves. They standing on their feet. They are doing pretty excellent. And y'all hitting the fact that y'all who are born here. Still struggling. And watching people who just came here three to four years ago. On their feet. Owning shit. And y'all hating on that. That is just straight up the base of the hate. That is nothing. But straight up. They base the source of the hate, nothing else. Because hate is nothing but a jealousy. You jealous, you can't jealous what you have. You only jealous what somebody have that you don't have. That is pure jealousy. That is just not that is just completely what it is. And then this come you, you see some of them talking about how the black uh, the Africans should worship them to thank them for building this country if it wasn't for what they did that the Africans wouldn't be doing successful in America let me clear that up we know the black Americans that built this country we know the Icons that did a job we appreciate them they know we appreciate them they know we all want Africa we appreciate them we forever will be uh, they, they will forever be appreciated they know that. But one thing is, they never made that comment. They never made that statement about Africans need to appreciate them or, 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 or thank them for building the country that they live in. They that did the work never made that statement, never make that comment. It is the ones that didn't do shit are the ones that are trying to take credit for. It. The ones that didn't do shit are the ones who are trying to take credit for it. Let me ask you of you personally. Personally, what did you do to build this country? You that is trying to take credit for the work that other people did. What did you personally do to build this country? What did you do personally? As a black American who's stuck in this rubbish, what did you do personally to build this country? Nothing. Isn't that ridiculous that people will do a job and other people want to take credit for it? What makes you think the Africans here ain't glad that the African, the black American icons who build this country, that we are not thankful for them, that we do not appreciate them? What makes you think that? What makes you think we don't appreciate them? The people who did the job know that we appreciate them. But you that didn't do the job when I take credit for it. So what did you do personally to build this country? Nothing, right? But you want to take credit for it. You want all the, the Africans in America to bow to you for building this country. You can't dig yourself out of, out of the mud. You can't dig yourself out of Section 8. You can't dig yourself out of government assistance. But you build the country. You can't dig yourself out of the mess. 
that you 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 are still struggling, but you build the country. Everybody wanna take credit for what they didn't do. All in the name of hate, jealous, jealous. Instead of learning from people who are doing better, what are they doing better that I'm not doing? Trying to learn from them to better yourself. Try and learn from the people doing better so you can better yourself. Instead of doing that, you just hating. Not only are they hating, but they're spinning the hate and see these the Africans that are hating on the black Americans. For what? Hating on y'all for what? Like for what? Like one good reason why I, an African will be hating on black on the black American. Just one good reason. For what? But y'all, we the one doing the hate. Does that even make sense? Think about it. Y'all need to cut it off from this bullshit. That's one of the most ridiculous conversations I ever heard. I never even heard this conversation before until I came to America. I never knew this conversation existed before I came to America. Until I started to witness that shit myself. And I started to wonder. These are daily experiences. <laughs> For my fellow black, black folks that I consider black, black family, they're the ones that want to hate. You'd be wondering. Even the ones that I work with. The ones that I, I worked with. And the ones that I still work with. You're going to need to cut it off. you need to quit the hate. I'm blaming the hate on other people. As some of y'all claim that you are not, not Africans. So your ancestors, they, they, they fell from the sky. Landed on a boat. And then that boat brought him to America. At least the white folks, we know their ancestors from Europe. But you were black, some of your black Americans say your ancestors are from Europe and from Africa. Your are from Africa, so your ancestors definitely, you're probably fell from the sky, landed on the boat, and the white brought him to America. Okay, so I haven't did a little video in a while but I wanted to come on here and talk to you guys about my experience um, with Africa um, y'all know I do a lot of traveling so I traveled to Ghana uh, last December this um, I just got back from Nigeria um, on Sunday Monday and let me tell you something, my experience was night and day, okay? I felt welcomed in Ghana, even though I was uh, with a, gr a group tour uh, with Ghana, but of course we felt welcomed. Um, it just, it, it, it wasn't a lot of the BS. And I, and I don't think that I looked on TikTok the way I do now to see this whole uh, division between Africans and African Americans. Um, I wasn't on TikTok. Um, it just wasn't trending the way it was, the way it is now, back when I went in to Ghana. Let me tell y'all something. And I, y'all know me. I can't do nothing but keep it a band. So I went to Nigeria. You know, my, 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 my man is a uh, Nigerian. So, you know, I went to Nigeria and uh, just to push pause on my experience, just a lot of the TikTok videos that you see about uh, American women, we being stupid, we being taken advantage of, they just want our money. Man, what the fuck is $20? Like, really? You know, everybody want to warn us that, you know, they using us. Child. I, you sure they ain't being used? I'm just, I'm just saying. Like, um, we not stupid. African American women, we not stupid. We we know what the fuck going on. You know what I'm saying? And um, I, last time I looked in the mirror, I'm real cute. So I ain't worried about a nigga taking advantage of me. You know what I'm saying? Um, cause I can take advantage of him too. But um, but anyway, you know, yeah, it's just the disconnect. It's just so disgusting on social media with black Americans and and Africans that the the disconnect is just so disgusting. And I I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh my experience is coming from uh women. Um you know I 
I don't want to sit here and talk about one uh, a country as a whole. Um, but I will say this. I, I, I know for me, um, coming to Ghana, coming to Nigeria, it is definitely night and day from home as far as uh, the economy. So for me, when I see um, children or people uh, begging for money or asking for money, I, it, 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 it breaks my heart. And I'm a giving person. You know what I'm saying? So I have no problem uh, giving money or, or whatever, especially when it's no, no sweat off my back, you know, and, you know, if I can afford it. But it really makes you not want to visit the country ever again when you get on social media and you see how bad people talk about or they talk about African Americans. It really makes you not even want to fucking come back. Listen, y'all, I was treated like shit in Nigeria, okay? Um, From the moment I got off that airplane, those people in that airport treated me like shit, okay? Um, Luckily, Nigeria is is aggressive, you you know? Most Nigerians are aggressive, Um, which, you know, that's your culture, whatever, you know, whatever. But um, to, to when you have uh, foreigners, visitors coming into your country, man, you don't treat people like shit. Uh, even on, on coming back, y'all, my big bag to go up under the plane, they kept my fucking bag. But anyways, that's a whole, a whole nother story. But um. Y'all, this is this has to change. I will say this until I I will say this now. I am a proud American. I am a proud black American. Whatever we want to call ourselves, American, African American, Black American, whatever the fuck it is, I'm a proud American. Okay. Uh and I'm not knocking any other country, but when we bust our ass over here. We work hard over here. And if we travel to your country, or if you travel to our country, you know how learn, learn how to treat people to come visit you, just like we need to learn how to treat people to come visit us. But I don't really never hear about um, African Americans treating Africans like shit when you come to visit. Most Africans here that I know in the United States, even talk shit about us saying that we're lazy. I just it it if it wasn't for my boyfriend, I'm sorry, fiance, um, being in uh, being from Nigeria, I don't think I will go back. I honestly do not think I will go back. You know, um, the women was so nasty to me they had no problem stopping looking me up and down rolling their eyes and walking on you do not experience that here in america now we're not perfect here by no means by no means but i'm telling you what i experienced what i know those women were nasty to me but i i don't care who see this this video i don't care but it, it 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 wasn't easy. And then just seeing the condition of the country, you want to help. Like when you see the condition of the country, you know, in, in Lagos, I, I was in a suburb. You want to help. Whether it's giving $20, $200, $1,000, you want to help because you see the, the struggle. You want to help. But it makes you not want to help when you're treated like shit. And all this don't come back. Don't now is don't come back to Daddy December. I'm like this. I won't. I won't. I'll just think about if Americans did not go back. Just think about if any other culture did not come back. It ain't our fault that your economy or your your government don't put your money back into your fucking economy. That ain't our fault. 
It's not our fault. Y'all talk a lot of shit about African Americans, man. When you really need to think about the shit that we done fucking been through to be able to live the lifestyle that we live, some of us, and for you to be able to come over here and live the lifestyle that y'all live, we don't owe y'all shit. And you don't owe us shit. But when I go in the shade room and when I look at uh, some of these comments, it ain't us talking shit about y'all. It's y'all talking shit about us. Oh, y'all not want to be African African because our music it is. Who pushed your fucking music? Your music is being pushed in the United States. We bought, we we wanted the fucking same, but all this uh now y'all want to be African. What the fuck are we? What are we? That's that's what kills me. Oh, now it's cool to be African. Baby, if I walk down the street beside you, ain't nobody going to be able to tell the fucking difference. Nobody's going to be able to tell the difference. So don't brag about, oh, cool being African and how we like African music. We push DeVito. We got DeVito uh, played on these motherfucking airways for it to become big. You know what I'm saying? So like, I and, and amongst others, I'm just saying, I know he was like one of the first who was like, you know, with the uh, Afro beats. But, yeah, I need to do better. Uh, but both need to do better. But the way I was treated in Nigeria, I, I don't have a desire to go back. My man's friends and family welcomed me. But the locals at the mall, oh my God. Very nasty, very rude, and it's hurtful when it comes from people that look like you. But I'm proud to be home. I'm proud to be an American. I, if you don't want me in your country, I don't have to come back to your country. I don't have to spend money in my country. And y'all really need to stop that rhetoric. Because if, if, if people stop coming to, to Nigeria or wherever, it, uh, that's a sad day for y'all, not for us. Okay, what I could say is when it comes to all of us as black people, as a black culture, we have to have a better level of respect for each other and the differences that we have. Our similarities are more important and we can't go back and forth with the bickering. And yes, these types of conversations do happen and we have to come to a point in our life where we have to say, you know, because me personally, I love, thank God that I'm black. I love being black. I love that my people and my culture, I love everything about me and the way I was raised. And as a black person, you should be feel the same way. I never point my finger at another black person or their culture just because it's different than mine and down them or look at them in a certain type of way. And I feel like when we all get to that certain point in our lives where we realize that we're all one, it'll be a more peaceful conversation. But until next time, it's your boy Mickey Fenty, a.k.a. Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe.